Hey guys, this is Mike at Lancaster, and I just want to thank you for joining us for our first episode of MLXT Live Weekly. In these series, what we're going to be focusing on is your ability to train yourself anywhere, anytime. And really the key of this is that no matter what's going on in your life or in the world, that you can always train and you can always work on your skills, no excuses. And really, this has been a message that I've been pushing for the last several years, so something like a coronavirus or anything else that might be going on is not going to stop us from being able to train and work on our skills. You do not have to have a basket, and that's what's really key. Now, we're going to be using basketballs at time and using footwork mats and using different cones and, and medicine balls, and we're going to be using different training tools to hold ourselves accountable. And what I'm going to show you in this program and through these workouts is that you can always replace those things as well because all we're going to be showing you is how to hold yourself accountable to truly master skills and master your abilities in a completely different way. And so for this first episode in our MLXT Live Weekly, we're going to be focusing on our footwork, we're going to be focusing on our drops and our pocket techniques, and you're going to understand that you can master your ball handling techniques and your footwork at a level that you've never experienced before without ever having to worry about finding a gym and without ever needing a basket at all. All you need right now is a basketball and your feet in a little bit of space. Now I'm gonna be using a footwork mat and this is where I'll just remind you that if you don't have a footwork mat, you can check the link in our description of this, of this workout and understand how you can replace that. Don't let the training tool and your access to the training tool hold yourself back. These are obviously great features. We have them and we will use them and we're gonna show you the benefits of them but these workouts are not restricted to your ability to have these tools in any way. Bottom line is, anywhere, anytime, no excuses, simply means you're gonna find a way to get it done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off working on our pocket dribble. And what I love about this is you have the ability to work out right along with me, just as if you're in the gym right now, where I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna teach you, and then it's gonna be your turn to put in your reps. But what I want you to focus on with the pockets is I want you to start off in a nice wide stance. Now, since I'm on the footwork grip mat, I have the ability to have my feet on the edges of the squares. And this is really key because a lot of times players find themselves in stances like this, skinny stances, feet underneath their shoulders. And I want you to focus on getting wider than your shoulders. And so just by standing on the outside edges of the square right now, I know that I'm wider than my shoulders and I'm in a deep, wide stance. Now, if you're a little bit taller, 6'6", six, six, maybe taller, now you can even get even wider than that. And still, the mat's doing you a great service because you have a frame of reference of how you're gonna hold yourself accountable. But right now, if I was starting off with a pocket, what I want you to focus on is just your ability to dribble straight down and make sure that your dribble's in front of your body. And so if I was dribbling down and pulling to my pocket, we're gonna do that every single dribble. What I want you to focus on is your ability to control the exact placement of the ball. So right now I'm aiming for the corner of this square, which is right inside my knees, and I'm making sure that I have the ability to always return that ball to the exact same spot. Now as you do this workout, what I want you to understand when we start with our ball handling is I, only, I not only want you to focus on where you're dribbling the ball, but also where the ball is traveling too. In today's game, you can manipulate, you can pull it. So as we start with our ball handling, right hand first, I want you to focus on dribbling in front and pulling my fingers to the side every single dribble. And if you're gonna focus on where you're placing it, I don't even mind if your eyes are down while you do your right hand with your pocket. There's gonna be much more to teach, but I'm not gonna give you everything at once because bottom line is, we gotta start to work. So right hand, nice wide stance, we wanna pocket every single dribble.
All right, now let's focus on our left hand. Now, you could have been in a situation where that two minutes was difficult for you, or you could have felt like it was relatively easy. But one thing that I always wanna remind you guys is that advanced and beginner, those two concepts are all in the details. So to hold yourself accountable and really make sure that you're at the advanced level of this, I want you to do a good job of focusing on where the ball is being placed. I don't want that to be random. And this is the type of situation where using your eyes will really tell you exactly how good your technique is. Now we're not worried about your eyes being stuck forever. We're not worried about those habits because this is one workout and we're simply trying to make sure that our technique is there. So as you go to your left hand, use your eyes and really focus on every dribble hitting the exact same spot of the mat. And now you have the ability to make sure that not only can you pull the ball to your pocket, but you also have perfect control with where that ball is being placed. So as you go to your left, just make sure that you're actually holding yourself accountable to every little detail so you know that you're actually doing this not only right, but you're also doing it real. Now that we've worked on our pockets with our right and our left hand, now we simply want to add a layer to that with a pocket through. Now really what we're getting down to when we're working on these techniques is having the ability to not only place the ball in front of our body, rather than a lot of players will dribble on the sides of their feet, but we're also getting used to the fact that in today's game, we can not only pull the ball to our pocket without carrying it, as long as my hand stays behind the ball, fingers to the side, but I can also manipulate the ball through my legs all in one motion, which means the ball is literally traveling from point A to point B and then all the way through, and that is legal in today's game. And so as we get into pocket throughs, which you're just gonna do continuously because it's constantly changing hands, I want you to really focus on your ability to do all of that in one motion. Dribble down, hold the pocket, go through, and then get right back to that original spot. And this is really the area that a lot of players will struggle with. They might be able to go through their legs, but their dribble will, all, will commonly fall to the sides. They don't get the ball back to the front of their body. And so we call that a turn float. Your ability to receive the ball and bring it back to the front and so you can control the ball back to where you want it. Because bottom line is if you can't get the ball back to the front of your body, you're gonna have a hard time making passes, getting shots, and finding driving opportunities. You're gonna be wasting dribbles and your body's gonna be in positions that just can't execute. So the most important thing right now is not only the dribble technique, but making sure that you always can start back in the same place. And so if I can pocket through each and every time and control where the ball is being placed, now my pocket dribble technique and my game readiness reaches a whole nother level. So wide stance, you have pocket 
breakthroughs. Now in this MLXT live weekly workout, we're going to be following a progression, which means we're starting at a basic level and we're building ourselves up. As you're going to find out in this program and through these workouts, that's not always going to be the case. But right now we've developed our ability to pocket the ball, so we have our pocket dribble technique, we have our pocket throughs, so now we can actually change hands and change directions. So now we're going to get into our actual drop footwork. But what I want you to focus on when we do our drops, we're not just going to do it stationary. So this is where I want you to start driving and taking off. So we're going to go over a drop, but I first want you to understand that if you look at the overall space that I'm using in this workout, which is why there's no excuses, which is why you can do this anywhere, anytime, I'm only using about three foot of space and I'm able to actually drive forward another three or four feet. And so all you need is literally a box of space and you can get this stuff done as long as you know the details and as long as you know how to hold yourself accountable. So right now, if I get into the drop, we're gonna drop and we're gonna explode into a speed stop. I want you to have the ability to really hold yourself accountable to your drop footwork. Now what a drop is, is if I'm dribbling, and notice I'm standing more in the middle of my mat now, so I've scooted my way up just a little bit, I wanna have the ability to split my feet and really get into a short, wide stance. Now as I do that, I pull the ball to my pocket, which we've already worked on. Now this is the stance I really want you to focus on. From this stance, I have everything at my disposal. From this stance, I can drive, which is what we're gonna be focusing on. From this stance, I can step in and shoot, which a lot of people mistakenly call hezies, even though it doesn't have to be a hesitation. And from this stance, I could do a through or a cross or some kind of change direction. And of course, I can always pass or I can reset back to that back foot. And so out of the drop, I have a lot of opportunities there, but if your drop doesn't consistently get to the same place, a lot of those opportunities are gonna be missed. And so right now, I want you to focus on your outside foot going forward, which is gonna be your right foot, your left foot going back, and you're able to get to the corners of the mat. Now at my stance, I'm getting to the outside edges. You might be, based on your size, more to the circles, and if you're bigger, longer, you might actually be to the edges. And of course, if you don't have the mat, then have some way to hold yourself accountable to short and wide stances. The last thing I want you to do is be long and skinny because from this stance, I can't push off that back leg. So as long as I can be short and wide, not have the ability to explode into those speed stops. So what I want you to spend some time on, we're just gonna continuously explode out of our drop, is your ability to drop and explode into those speed stops each and every time, and then just reset it. So all I want you to do is focus on your drop technique and your explosions. And this is where I don't mind you looking at your feet, studying your techniques, 
and making sure that you're doing these things correctly. So you're gonna focus on your right side right now, which means you're stopping left, right. And when we get to the left, we'll make sure that we go over some of the things that you may have struggled with or that you need to keep in mind. But for right now, let's focus on our drops right into those speed stops. Now, as we go left with our drops right into our speed stop, obviously we're exploding out of this. But what I want you to remind you is even if you struggled with this, or maybe you didn't feel quite right with your pockets, whatever that might be, don't worry about if you're struggling. Don't worry about if you feel like it's over your head or if you're not quite getting it perfect. Because as you're gonna find out in our training, there's gonna be other workouts that are gonna fix some of these underlying issues. And doing it wrong or doing it poorly isn't gonna hurt you. What's really important is your intent and that you understand what is supposed to be the end result. As long as your brain knows that, you can get through those mistakes without obviously harming you. So that's why we're teaching it. So when you do your drop, now your left foot's gonna go forward, your right foot's gonna go back, the ball's gonna be pulled into your pocket. I would rather have you pull the ball to your pocket and accidentally carry it than what a lot of players do is just try to raise the ball and bring it to their shoulder. So really make sure, and if you're doing this by yourself, if you happen to have someone to watch, maybe even recording with your phone, make sure that you can actually pull the ball to your pocket and that it's actually getting there because that's what's gonna give you the most power later on in this move. Don't cheat it even if you're carrying it because we can always correct the carry. So when you do your drops, I want you to be able to drop and explode into the speed stop and make sure that you're doing that aggressively. You have a few minutes here, so make sure that when you're driving and exploding into those stops, give it your energy and then relax. You set back up, take a few dribbles, and then your drop into your speed stop. Do it explosively. Feel like you're driving and really feel what that drop is doing for your game. So take your time on your way back, but make sure that your energy is in each and every rep while you're working on your drops to the left.
Now that we've gotten our drop and we know that we have the ability to explode out of the drop, we're going to add in the through option. Now what I really like about doing the through first is it's really going to teach us about our load foot. Now when I do a drop, I need to have the understanding that my weight can't always be right down the middle. I have to be able to load my weight. And so right now what I need to understand is my outside foot is going to be my load foot. I may be pushing off my back leg, but if this foot's not loading, it's not going to be able to stabilize me and give me that secondary push. And the same thing is true when I have to change directions. See, if I drop and then I have to go through my legs and I'm going to make that change of direction, if I haven't properly loaded over this foot, what you're going to find yourself is this foot is going to slip on you. And you're probably going to notice that as you do this because the majority of players struggle with that load foot. And so instead of doing a drop and a through, where obviously you can see this foot's still on that gray and this foot's at the edge of the mat, instead you're going to find out at the end of it is you're going to be foot way back in the blue in another split position. And so that's what you're going to try to fight on this. And so as you do your drop throughs, we're not going to go forward yet. What I want you to focus on is your ability to drop and then go through and really study where you're at. Now when you do that, keep in mind of what that, dr what that drive just felt like. If you don't feel like you could have exploded out of your drop, then you're no longer doing the drop at all. You're doing a drill. And what you're always going to hear me say is that drills don't work. Drills stink. You have to actually understand what you're tapping into. And so you need to understand the method. A method has reasons, it has purpose, it has clarity. And so right now you have to make sure that load foot stays down. And then when I go through, I'm making sure that foot's not sliding back. I always feel like I can drive. And so now I'm truly getting all of those details into this move. And that's what's going to help build this up into a truly deadly drive later on. And so for your time doing your drop throughs, what I want you to focus on is hitting those same spots, getting the ball to your pocket, stepping into that through and make sure that you're still in the confines of this space. If you're finding that you're stepping way out here, you got to pull that back because I'm losing strength in my hip and I want to make sure that I'm staying short and wide with every rep. Now as we hit the left side in our drop throughs, let's just focus on some of the common mistakes that you may be experiencing. A lot of times when players do drops, they script their movements. And so for instance, if I knew I wanted to drive left, a lot of times they'll turn their body and now my hips and my shoulders are pointed to the left. 
the most important thing right now is that we're locking our shoulders and we're locking our hips straight on to our target because I want to have the ability to truly change directions and have those options. And so first make sure that when you're doing your drop that you're not turning. We want to have the ability to stay squared, ball still in our pocket, and from this position we go through, same thing. I'm not pivoting awkwardly into that step. Everything stays locked, locked ahead. I'm not rotating, and then I can have that drive. So when you go left, just make sure that we don't have any twisting and turning of the body. You're keeping your eyes on your space and on your feet, making sure that you're not struggling with that space. Once again, not stepping too far ahead, but really feel as you do this that your hips and your shoulders are staying in those squared positions. Those are the details that are gonna make a huge difference as you really focus on your drops and your throughs. And so keep that in mind as you go to the left side. Now as we take this workout to another level, now we're going to challenge ourselves with a drop through and a rip cone snatch. Now once again, if you have the rip cone, that's going to be a phenomenal tool for you. And if you don't, just understand what the accountability is for. Because what we want to be able to do right now is drive out of our drop throughs. But it's very difficult at times to feel that we're actually playing the game at a low level or a realistic level. For instance, if I do a drop through and then I just simply run forward like that, my shoulders are upright, my chest is upright, and I may even feel like I'm low, but I'm not really playing the game in a realistic way. So if I can grab the cone, it's not really about grabbing the cone at all. It's about putting my body in the game-like position that I'm looking for. And so if I do my drop through, I wanna be able to not only pull off that footwork, but I wanna sink my hips and drop my shoulder to the point where I can get my inside hand through the cone. And yeah, that could simulate defense in my hand positioning, but more important to me than even that is that shoulder being low so I can explode past. And so all I want you to really focus on when you do this is getting that low level and exploding into that same speed stop on your drive all while grabbing that cone by the grip. And so if I do those same reps that we already went through, but I'm exploding now by grabbing the cone, now I'm really gonna understand my body positions. So what you're gonna do is spend time, once again, starting in the middle of the mat, doing my drop through, grabbing the cone by the grip, and then truly feeling like I'm driving. What's beautiful about this, and you can always set it back up, what's beautiful about this is that you're gonna know that you're doing things exactly the way you wanna do them without having to feel like, ah, I'm not really sure if I'm getting this right. I'm not sure if I'm getting the technique because the cone is going to force it upon you. And if you don't have that, then just picture what it would be like to drop through and grab 
And even that action is going to have some benefit. But nothing's going to quite replace the ability to make contact with that object and really put yourself in that frame of mind. So as you do your drop throughs, just drive and reset. Focus on keeping that exact same footwork, but making sure that you're able to get to the grip of that cone every single time. As you hit the left side with your drop through with a rib cone snatch, just keep in mind some very crucial details. Some of those details could simply be where you're placing the cone. If you place the cone too far away from you, you may not have actually been challenging yourself in the right way. So make sure that you keep the cone closer to the mat and making sure that you actually have to get that shoulder down earlier. In fact, the closer that I put this cone, the more it's going to challenge my body's ability to get low sooner. Because really what we're challenging ourselves to do is being able to go through, but be mobile enough to be able to sink down at this level before we've even met the defense and making sure that we're putting our body in that position. And so if I'm able to get it sooner or closer to the mat, I know that I'm low at this point and now I can know I can simply drive. Now, if you're doing this, be careful about simply grabbing the cone and then popping back up. Nothing's holding you accountable to stay low. So we had the accountability in the beginning, but don't come back up to drive. And that's the type of the, of the workout that I would call personal accountability. The cone and grabbing that is forced accountability. We can force those upon you. We can make sure that your details are there. We can make sure your body position is there. But then of course, you always have to have personal accountability to make sure that everything else is still moving properly. The cone is a cheat sheet. It's just gonna help you make sure that you're doing things right and real. You have to still hold yourself accountable the rest of the way. So as you go left, focus on that footwork, make sure you don't lose your space, and challenge yourself by where you place the cone to make sure that you're in game heights when you're working on this skill.
Now that we've gotten through a lot of our techniques, we have our pockets, our throughs, our drops, and our drop throughs, our body position is correct, you still may feel like something's not right on your drive. It just might not look real, it might not feel real, and if that's the case, and I'm guessing for many of you it is, this is the secret. And this is the last part of this that I really want to emphasize. And so we're going to go back to our original drop and really going to focus on how you were driving out of it. And so what I want you to be able to understand is if I got into this drop, you have to understand that there's a defender here. And so this cannot be space that I drive into. So often when I work with players and we do this drop, what they're going to end up doing is they're going to drop and they're going to step straight into that stop. And so if your space is right in front of you, you probably didn't quite feel right and you don't know why. You might even have blamed this drop footwork saying, I'm not sure about this, all because your drive wasn't realistic. So keep in mind that if someone was in front of you, you can't step here. You have to be able to understand how to do an inside step, which means this foot is gonna to need to be able to get into this line. And so we're gonna hold ourselves accountable as our last element here to that inside step. So not only can you do the drop, but you actually are swinging the foot in a way that's gonna actually be effective. And this step right here, this technique, might be the most important step in basketball, and it might be the one that's taught the absolute least. And so this is gonna be a key element to you, and in later workouts, we're gonna master this even further. But right now, if we do the drop, and I have the cone right in the middle, or in other words, right underneath my hips, I wanna have the ability to drop and swing that foot all the way around the cone, closing the gap between my knees to make sure that I'm actually getting by this defender in a true straight line. I don't wanna cross step and battle with my hips. I wanna make sure that my shoulders and my hips stay square. And so as you have that same drive using this cone, now you can drive and swing it around and now you found yourself in a realistic feeling drive, one that's actually gonna work in the game. So go to the right side, swing the left foot tightly around and make sure that it's not going around the other way or over the top, but really feel like you're making that a quick, tight move and that you can explode in a true straight line in those wide lines. Now as we hit the left side of our drops with our inside step, keep in mind that this might not feel normal right away. Whenever you make any type of tweak, it's not necessarily going to feel great. Don't shy away from it because bottom line, if you can't make this step, you're not beating a defender that's guarding you in a squared stance. Keep in mind what that stance would look like. If someone was guarding you squared up 
and they're guarding you in this position, you have to get outside their lines. And so those are the lines that you're actually driving. This space is not available to me. And this is the key. So this might have felt even slower for you because you're not used to swinging that foot, which is why we're focusing on this as fast as we can. Find the explosiveness. Find a way to make this footwork work for you because if you don't, you're gonna be left behind in this game. So make sure that when you do your drop and you're actually exploding, that you're really pulling that foot to the side, feeling what the inside step actually feels like, but don't cheat it. Don't find yourself doing your drop over here because now you have no accountability. So as long as you can hit these lines, you stay just as wide, ball in your pocket, and you have this technique, you're ready to truly start exploding by people with a drop in the game. Hey guys, thanks for joining us again for our first episode of MLXT Live Weekly Workouts. And really we got a lot done today. We're gonna to continue pushing the envelope and adding more skills to our game each and every week. Just keep in mind, every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're gonna be bringing you another weekly workout where we continue advancing our skills anywhere, anytime, no excuses. So make sure you join me next week because bottom line is the depth chart does not take time off, and so neither should you. I'll see you guys next week.